بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلي وسلم على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين نبينا وحبيبنا وقرة اعيننا محمد بن عبد الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه افضل الصلاه واتم التسليم اما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في قرانه العزيز بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم muslimun all praise and thanks be to almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is no doubt our creator sustainer nourisher protector and cure we ask him the almighty the lord of all worlds the exalted to shower his choicest of blessings and salutations upon our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam his family members his companions and all those who tread upon his path with utmost sincerity until the day of qiyamah My dear respected elders and brothers in Islam first and foremost I advise myself I enjoin upon myself and then all of you all present here to adopt a life of taqwa and that is to be conscious of your maker of your creator during every single second of your lives if you wish to attain success in this world if you wish to attain victory in this world as well as the hereafter may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all from the victorious and successful ones amen Today's topic inshallah ta'ala is going to be in the footsteps of the greatest environmentalist to ever walk on the face of this earth Muhammad salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi The past few days I'm sure every single one of us here we are aware of the Mithat Amulla tragedy the garbage landslide that costed the lives of many The, de- the death toll if i'm not mistaken as of today is ranging somewhere around 30 people have passed away and if you were to read certain headlines it clearly states that it was a preventable tragedy it was a preventable tragedy now that it has happened it is upon the country it is upon the leaders of the country and likewise it is upon each and every one of us as citizens of this country to do something about it we have to work towards a solution i'm not going to be talking about it from a political angle i'm going to be talking about this from an individual perspective as to what we should do in this regard and before i go into the tips that i have to share with you all i would like to highlight how much islam our religion emphasizes in regard to these standards that i'm going to talk about inshallah ta'ala green standards rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam like i started off was the greatest environmentalist to walk on the face of this earth if you only go into his sira with an intention to deduce lessons from that angle you will find many a lesson many a teaching that he left behind sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam Allah Azza wa Jal states about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alamin that you O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you were not sent except as a mercy unto mankind mercy in the sense he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent as a merciful individual to mankind in the sense to all of us to the environment around us to the animals he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent as a mercy upon a very very broad spectrum and this is something that we have to understand and apart from that we also have the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam where he is reported to have said ad-din an-nasiha the deen is a nasiha now at times we look at this hadith too from a very skewed perspective or a narrow minded a constricted angle where we think oh the deen is all about advi- only advising one another yes it is to advise one another it is to remind one another wadhkir fa inna dhikra tanfa'u al-mu'minin reminders profit the believers yes but likewise the deen is about caring about one another to care about one another to care about the community to care about the society to care about the country at large some of us are even turning a blind eye in regard to the tragedy that just took place 
I'm sure whenever you tune into the news, you hear of the families that have been struck. They've lost members. Houses destroyed. And we're not talking about a natural disaster. We're talking about garbage. The tons and tons of garbage that you and I, we dispose on a daily basis. So there has to be a solution. And Islam has clearly outlined this. And this is what I'm going to be talking about insha'Allah ta'ala. I came across an interesting hadith as I was prepping myself for this talk. The hadith has been recorded in the books of authentic uh, narrations. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said along the lines of these words. And Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anh, he reports the narration. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, if the final hour comes, if the day of judgment comes, whilst you have a sapling, a tree, a palm cutting in your hands, and if it is possible for you to plant it before the hour comes about, then you should plant it. Such a profound hadith. Amazing. I want you all to internalize this narration. Let me repeat it again in my own words inshallah. If the final hour comes, in the sense, let me give you an example. If you are all told that the day of Qiyamah, listen to me attentively. If the day of Qiyamah, see at the end of the day, don't listen to me. These are the words of the Prophet ﷺ. I am just a messenger conveying the words of the Prophet ﷺ. This is how the real students of knowledge would listen to talks. They would listen as if the Prophet ﷺ was talking. I'm not saying that I'm anywhere close to such scholars or even the Prophet ﷺ. But I'm narrating his words. And I want you all to pay an attentive ear to his words. Think of it if the Prophet ﷺ were to be talking right now. How attentively and how earnestly you would be listening to him. Now these are his words. And you and I, we all have to pay an attentive ear. So let me elaborate the hadith again, Sham. Think of it. If the final hour is about to occur, if you have been told that the day of Qiyamah is going to commence in one hour's time, in two hours' time, or if the day of Qiyamah is going to be tomorrow, and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is stating, if you have a sapling, what's a sapling? A young tree, a plant in your hands, a palm cutting, because palm trees were common and prevalent during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you have a young tree in your hands, and if you have the time, if you are able to plant it, before the day of Qiyamah commences, then you should plant it. Now you might think to yourself, if the day of Qiyamah is to commence tomorrow, if the day of Qiyamah is to commence in one hour's time, don't you think that I should be busy with other things, that are more pressing matters that I should be concerned about, and not necessarily be worried about planting a sapling. But look at the words of the Prophet ﷺ. Plant the tree. In this hadith we understand that however hopeless a situation you may be in, now some of us, when you you know talk to certain individuals, they say, oh, it's hopeless. The country is corrupt. The leaders are corrupt. The system is corrupt. There's no way to prevent this. And this is going to keep on happening. People are making money out of waste. It's a money-making machine. There's nothing that we can do about it. And then they fall on to Qadr. It was decreed by Allah. So we go with the flow. There's nothing that we can do about it. Look at the Prophet ﷺ. Look at the words. What is he saying? Even if the day of Qiyamah is tomorrow, that's doom. Everything is to be destroyed. Look at that sense of hopelessness. But yet if you have a tree in your hands, then go ahead and plant it. Now the day, we don't have any information that the day of Qiyamah is going to commence tomorrow. In other words, we don't know for sure that the world is going to end tomorrow. So we are not at the end of the world. So most definitely, we can do something about it. We can work towards a solution. If each and every one of us, just as how he is reported to have said, go and plant the tree, it's just one individual with one tiny tree going to plant it. Likewise, if each and every one of us, if we make up our minds that we can do something about it, I am going to bring about a change. Firstly, in my life, I'm not going to go about a harping and butting myself into, you know, the matters of others or into the business of others. No, I'm going to bring about a change. Then if we all collectively do so, 
the impact is going to be so much more greater, subhanallah. Now this is what the Prophet ﷺ is highlighting in the hadith. And apart from that, we have many other hadith that can go on and on. We have another hadith where the Prophet ﷺ is reported to have said, that planting trees, planting trees, see I'm, I'm, I'm tackling this from, like I said, from the angle that he said, was the greatest environmentalist. Planting trees is a renewable source of reward. Hadith is in the book of Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah. Rasulullah is reported to have said, if a Muslim plants a tree or sows seeds and then if a bird or a person or an animal eats from that particular tree, it is regarded as a sadaqa for that individual. You plant a tree and you pass away. If animals benefit from that tree, if human beings shelter themselves under that tree, if birds consume of that tree, it is an ongoing sadaqah for you, subhanallah. You are contributing towards a greener world for the future generations, for your own children, and it is also a renewable source of reward for you. One tree. Today, do we even think of planting trees? You know, our grandparents, they used to emphasize this a lot. Now we live in very urban settings and we don't think about planting trees. But in the past, whenever there would be seeds, they would emphasize, go plant it out. Just go plant it. And those are the trees that we are enjoying today. We see huge, big trees. At times when we drive through a road where you see beautiful trees from both sides shading you, you feel so peaceful. You're breathing in fresh air. You feel comfortable. You're not affected by the heat. You see animals, birds, you hear the chirping of birds. Now we live amidst concrete structures. And this was all what the generations of the past did for us. What are we doing for our children? Think about it. You plant a tree, it's a renewable source of reward, subhanallah. And then we have many a hadith where the Prophet ﷺ is reported to have emphasized a lot in regard to conserving resources. Even if it be when you're using it for a daily ritual, such as for example, wudu. Once the Prophet ﷺ was passing by a companion, if I'm not mistaken, Sa'ad radiallahu an, and he was performing ablution by a river, a flowing river, a stream. He was performing ablution. Rasulullah ﷺ was very observant. When you go through the hadith, you easily come to that conclusion. He was very, very observant, sharp-eyed, hawk-eyed. He observes the companion and then he looks at him and he says, Ya Sa'ad, Ya Sa'ad, what is this squandering? In other words, why? Why this wastage? Why this wastage of water? Why this squandering? And Sa'ad radiallahu anhu, he was perplexed. He asks the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, can there be an idea or can there be a concept of squandering when it comes to ablution? When it comes to wudu, can there be an idea of squandering? Can there be a concept of israf? I'm washing well, so how am I squandering the water? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then went on to educate him. Ya Sa'ad, yes, it is squandering, it is going to be considered a wastage, even if you are by a flowing river, subhanallah. You're by this massive, huge river, and you might think, What's going to happen if a few droplets of water go in vain? There's so much of water out there. But the Prophet ﷺ teaches us to conserve natural resources. Then think about water today. Think about the countries where people are dying without water. Or they have to walk miles on end to get fresh water. Those of you who are up to date, you would know that there are now companies, charitable organizations working on different mechanisms to purify water. To purify water. There was even a convention held here in Sri Lanka where it was demonstrated where you run dirty water from the sewage through a particular mechanism and out comes fresh water. The person who demonstrated the mechanism even had a glass of that water to prove how clean the mechanism makes the water. The whole point here being how valuable a resource water is. At times we let the water run. We think, oh, I've got two tanks, two overhead tanks. I have nothing to worry about. Even if there's a water cut for one week, my house, my family, I can shower three, four, five times a day. Subhanallah. See, sometimes we think 
to proudly state that you know what I can't do without showering four to five times a day is a you know good thing to say. No, if you can manage, if you can manage with just one wash a day, I'm not saying be dirty. There's supposed to be a balance. Don't go overboard. You're not supposed to be dirty, you're not supposed to have a bad odor, but nor are you supposed to go on the other end where you end up squandering water, taking shower after shower. Every single khutbah you would have, you would have heard the khatib read, Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'i dil qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal baghi ya'idhukum la'allakum tadhakkaroon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is stating, Indeed, Allah ya'muru bil adl commands you and joins upon you al adl justice wal ihsan and ihsan justice there are many definitions and one of the most prominent of definitions is that you fulfill the rights of things the fulfill you fulfill the rights of people and that you put a thing in its place where it belongs if you were to do injustice in that regard then you are doing injustice you know, he said, Allahu Alaihi Wasallam was very particular and careful about his belongings. He didn't have a lot of things. I'm coming to that if time permits, inshallah. He was a minimalist. He was a minimalist. He didn't have a lot of things. He had a clutter-free life, a stress-free life. But in regard to what he had, he valued them. He even named his things, subhanallah. Today, our materialistic possessions, we don't care about it. Because we are pretty confident that you know what, if it breaks, I'm just going to dump it and go for another thing. Because I have money, who cares? He said, was very careful with his clothing, with his, with his possessions. Like I said, he even named his things. Why? Because he felt that, okay, this belongs to me. I need to be careful with it. I need to optimize my usage of it and use it to the very best. Like if you have a mobile phone, use it, use it. Some of us, we have the habit of, you know, keeping on changing. Use it as much as possible until... And I'm guilty of it myself. See, firstly, you have to understand that I have a habit, my talks, my posts on Facebook, on Twitter, they're not for anybody. People might think that it relates to them, but by Allah, Wallahi, they are to myself first. I'm advising myself. People relate to it and they think, okay, Shaykh, you know what, you, you read my mind. And you posted this, you know, at the time and I've wanted it. You, 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 it's as if you knew about the predicament, about the problem that I'm in. People say that. Some people will come after the talk and say, you know what, your talk was not good. Some people will say, you know, your talk was good. But I am not doing it for it to be rated as good or bad. I'm doing it for myself. I'm advising myself. So he said, Allahu Alaihi Wasallam was very careful with his possessions. And I'll come to that in a while, inshallah ta'ala. We need to also be careful with our possessions. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is also reported to have said, again, in terms of conserving natural resources, beware, beware of three acts that cause you to be cursed. Subhanallah. Be wary, be careful, beware of three acts that cause you to be cursed. Number one, Relieving yourselves in a shaded place or in places that people utilize for shade, number one. Number two, in a walkway, where people walk a lot, a frequent, uh, a place that people frequent in terms of walking, like a street, a crowded place. Don't relieve yourself there. Or in a watering place where people come to water themselves or water their animals. And I say water themselves, they come to procure water, to drink, to cleanse themselves. Don't go and relieve yourself there. You're causing harm to others. In Allah ya'muru bil adl, justice. Wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alameen. He said Allah was sent as a mercy unto mankind. The final hadith that I would like to share with you all before moving on to the tips because I'm running out of time. He said Allah is also reported to have said that removing harmful things from the road is an act of charity. A hadith that we have come across many a time. But I want you all to internalize this particular hadith at this particular situation, taking into consideration the myth of the Mullah tragedy. The whole point of a Jumu'ah sermon is to talk about relevant matters, pertinent matters. And with that tragedy, which is the elephant in the room, staring at us in our faces. I can't be talking about other things. I have to address it. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's report to have said, removing harmful things from the street 
is an act of charity, subhanallah. But what are we doing? I'm guilty of it myself. We have something to eat, and we chuck it out of the window. We don't care. My house is not being littered. My garden is not being littered. My driveway is not being littered. So who cares? I'm in someone else's driveway. I'm in someone else's neighborhood. I want my car to be... You know something? Put it in your car. Sometimes if you were to get into my vehicle, you would find receipts, whatever, in my car. It's okay. Because when you are going to cleanse or clean your car, you can dispose of that properly instead of littering the streets. The hadith is, if you remove something harmful from the streets, then it's an act of charity. And it's obviously the contrary or the opposite if you're going to litter the streets intentionally. Some people do it unintentionally. If it falls off your pocket, you're not going to be held accountable. But intentionally, you want to discard the receipt, you throw it out. You want to discard a old tissue, you throw it out. You want to discard a polythene bag, you throw it out. You want to discard a drink, you throw it out. A plastic bottle, you throw it out. Go see the footage, the pictures of the garbage that has been collected. And you all know, most of you might have been out of Colombo, but those of you who were in Colombo, the last of, the, the whole of last week, the, the people who collect garbage, the CMC, did not come to collect the garbage. And we saw garbage being heaped out everywhere in Colombo. Just imagine if we don't have a system in place, how unhealthy it's going to be, how unclean our lives are going to be. There's no point in saying that, oh, I'm clean, I'm clean, I'm clean, whilst your surrounding is not clean. This is what the Prophet ﷺ is highlighting in all these ahadith. We need to be proactive. We can't be like, you know what, I'm clean, I don't have to bother about the others. No, ad al nasiha, like I started off. Deen is caring about others, caring about yourself, caring about your family, caring about your community, caring about your society, caring about your country. And by extension, you care, you, you care globally as well. And that's the standard we're looking at setting. Now I'm quickly going to go into a few tips that I have in place for you all. And these tips are in the form of two, say three or four R's, you know the letter R. Number one, reduce. Number one, reduce. If you don't take anything from me today, at least take this. Simplify, simplify, simplify. Simplify your life as much as possible. Only keep things that you use slash enjoy on a regular basis. What did I say? He said Allah was a minimalist. He was a minimalist. He had very little things that he needed and he kept it so. You know about the description of the house of the Prophet You know when he passed away what he had. He was a very very simple person. Today we have so much of clutter around us. We do, myself included. You know, there is this famous proverb, a Swedish proverb. He who buys what he does not need, steals from himself. He who buys what he does not need, steals from himself. Because you're wasting money. That thing or that object that you bought is obviously going to take up space in your life. It could be at your office, it could be at your workplace, it could be at home. You're not going to use it, it's just going to gather dust, it's going to clutter your life. So he who buys what he does not need, what he does not need, steals from himself. In the process of decluttering, even if you feel inclined towards doing it, these questions should help you do so. Go home, go to your workplace, go to your belongings. Look at this, the, the stuff that you have and ask yourself these questions. Have I used this in the last year? Have I used this in the last year? Think about it first. And then ask yourself, if I were to shop right now, if I were to shop right now, would I buy this object? Do I really need this object? Number three, do I have a similar item with me that serves a similar purpose? Because then you're duplicating. Do I have, another question to ask yourself, do I have a realistic plan to use this particular thing, this particular possession? Another question that you could ask yourself, does it fit me or my living space? Because some of us, we have the habit of holding. Some people, when they look at a chair, no, I don't want to let this chair go. It's a broken, old, rusty chair. But you don't want to let it go. And you're in the move to organize your life but you're finding it so difficult because of all the clutter around you. 
You know, eliminate things instead of trying to organize them. Eliminate them. When I say eliminate, you don't necessarily have to throw them. Maybe you can give it away to someone else who might use it. If you have no need towards it. Minimalism is the new black. Those of you who would understand the statement would understand it. That is what is trending today. Minimalism. But you know what? 1400 odd years ago, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a minimalist. His wardrobe was a minimalist wardrobe. His house was full of minimalism. His life was the life of a minimalist. Nowadays the concept, go back home whenever you have time, read about it. Capsule wardrobe. Capsule wardrobe. Google it. It's a term that was coined in the 1970s by a London boutique called the wardrobe. Capsule wardrobe is the concept of minimalizing or minimizing your clothing items to just have a few essential items that fit any season and that can be augmented to fit any different style. At times we have so many pieces of clothing that we go stand in front of our wardrobes, we don't know what to wear, we've got mismatched clothing, mismatched socks, we don't know how to wash them and they keep piling themselves. Honestly, go back to your houses and look at the mess. At times it might be organized. I'm not saying that we are all messy people, but there will be so much of clutter. Once you get away, once you get rid of all that clutter, you start to live a very stress-free life. You're able to think clearly. And my dear brothers in Islam, it's not only about materialistic possessions. When I say clutter, I also mean ideas, toxic relationships, bad habits. These things clutter your life as well. So declutter as much as possible. Apart from that, in terms of clutter, you have notifications as well. You know, I'm just talking about this in a very broad way. Notifications. These days, we have so many applications. And you are literally, you know, notified for every single thing. You hear a ping for this, a ping for that, a WhatsApp notification. You are in a number of groups. Go and declutter your WhatsApp. If you feel like, ask these questions. Do you really need to be in this group? Do you really need to be exposed to this, the, the, the information that they're sharing on this particular group? Or is it a nuisance? If so, come out of it. Excuse yourself and come out of it. You're living a stress-free life. Or if you feel like you can't come out immediately, mute the notifications. You get notifications for WhatsApp. You get notifications for Facebook. You get notifications for Snapchat. You get notifications for Instagram. You get notifications from work, from Slack, Telegram, Viber. Ting, 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 ting. Full of clutter. Declutter your life and you live a stress-free life. So only choose what matters to you. Remove all the other applets. You don't really need them. You get an app, you get a, a notification each time a new track is posted on SoundCloud. If you really need to know that information, then okay. Opt to be notified. Otherwise, declutter. Try your level best to declutter your email inbox. You know, come out of all the subscriptions that you don't need. You start to live a stress-free life. And it will help you towards what? Contributing towards society. Let me give you one small example. Some of us, we have the habit to write, which is a good thing. Which is a good thing. But then again, you know, that you try and make your life tree free as possible tree free you know that for paper they have to harvest it from trees so opt for recyclable paper and on the other hand like say for example you want to write down a to-do list or you're going to the market some of us have the habit that we need we're so we're very organized so we need a grocery list so we've got these sticky notes we've got this paper pad that we write down all the items you know milk eggs bread vegetables you know tomatoes potatoes whatever you write it down but then what happens to the piece of paper? In due time, it's just going to be chucked somewhere. So You know what? It's like a waste of paper. And now that you all have digital devices, we all have mobile phones. We all have mobile phones. I'm sure if this was not a khutbah, if I were to ask you all for a show of hands as to whether who in the crowd does not have a mobile phone, even the uncles, very old uncles, would not raise their hands because we all have mobile phones. Either we are running iOS or Android two prominent operating systems. Go to the App Store, go to the Play Store, there are enough and more apps to organize your life, to have to-do lists in place, to have journals in place, to have 
what do you call it? Grocery lists in place. A few examples. Wonder list, a very good app. Todoist, a very good app. But these are all paid apps. If you want something free, opt for Google Keep. Opt for Remember the Milk. These are all free applications. And you can have it all listed there. You can have your spouse send it to you and you can save it there. You're not wasting paper. It's a small thing. It's a small tip from me. But then, if you all were to apply it, think about how much of paper we would conserve. How many trees we would save. It's a small thing. Instead of plastic bottles, opt for glass bottles. When you go to stores, tell them, if possible, take your own bag and go, like a cloth bag. Certain supermarkets have that option. Instead of, you know, continuously using plastic bags. If each and every one of us, this is an awareness that we have to create. And this tragedy, Mithra Mullah, was a wake-up call. A wake-up call. Think about it, if you are going to be covered in debris, your children to be covered in debris, your house to be destroyed by the garbage that you are throwing on a daily basis, by the water bottles that you are throwing on a daily basis, by the pampers that you dispose on a daily basis. You know, there are guidelines even in terms of pampers. We, what do we do? We're supposed to educate our families, the folks at home, that when discarding those pampers, that's how they do it abroad. You're supposed to first take out the poo or you know, the waste basically and flush it down the toilet and then throw the pamper. But what we do is we wrap up everything in one nice package and we put it out because we don't care. My house is clean, but then that's going to be dumped elsewhere. If you can reduce, reduce as much as possible. It's going to be a long process. It's not, you can't do it overnight. And this process is cheap. You don't now, now, just because I said capsule wardrobe, don't go shopping now. You only have to eliminate. You don't have to shop for anything. Just eliminate. Reduce what you have. You have 10 watches, for example. And if you feel like you're not using them, sell them, give them away. If you're maybe an Apple Watch person like I am, then it's a pretty versatile device can use it for all your purposes and it serves the purpose. If you're not wearing certain clothing items, give it away. See, this generation is an interesting generation because we have so many options out there. You would notice that today's youngsters, maybe not in Sri Lanka, the trend is yet to catch up in Sri Lanka, but go abroad. Those of you who travel, check it out abroad. Due to applications like Uber, many youngsters are now opting not to have vehicles. Because it's a stress-free life. Whenever you want to get from point A to point B, you've got the applet with you. You've got, and, and you know, in other countries, you get pretty posh vehicles coming to pick you up, like in European countries. So you have nothing to worry about. You don't have to worry about parking space. Like in countries like Japan and other places, parking is a big problem. And here too, it's becoming a problem. And you have to constantly worry about your vehicle parked out there. Somebody's going to scratch it. Somebody's going to rob something from it. So they're opting, even though they have the money, and trust me, in European countries for 2 million, 3 million Sri Lankan rupees, you can have a brand new 2017 lovely vehicle. But they're opting to Uber it because less stress. They're opting to have smaller spaces, easy to maintain. You don't need a maid. You can do it yourself. Smaller, compact spaces. Easy to clean. Easy to keep it very minimal. This is the trend, and that's why I said the min that, that minimalism is the new black. It is what is trending today. But this is already in Islam. This is from the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu Try it out. I'm just encouraging you all. I'm in the process as well. And it's something good at the end of the day. It's something good, mashallah. R number two. I'm just going to take another few minutes, inshallah. Reuse. First was reduce. Number two, reuse. Try to reuse. And I already touched on it. If you have... A bag that you can reuse, reuse. If you have a glass bottle that you can reuse, reuse. If you can carry your mug wherever you can carry your mug, carry it and stop using things that have to be disposed. Opt for reusables over disposables. That way you're contributing towards a greener standard. And finally, recycle slash rot. That's the R, last R. You know, in certain supermarkets, like I think in Arpico and other places, you can get compost bins. If you're living in a house where there's a garden and whatnot, you can compost, you can rot your own garbage. You can put it in that, put it with some soil, and after some time, it becomes fertilizer, it becomes soil. It's an option that we can look at doing to reduce your waste. To reduce your waste. It's an option. You can consider it. So try out these tips. 
read about it you know educate yourself towards a, a, a an almost zero waste lifestyle that way you're contributing in a big way you know of the pictures you know the amount of plastic bottles that are dumped you know the animals that suffer you know of the animals that that i in see that suffer due to the plastic that we dump you know we may be a third world country but we can live up to great standards because we are muslim moon we are following the standards of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam our masajid need to become green masajid our homes need to become green homes we as individuals need to become green individuals contributing towards earth and most importantly think about the generations after us think about your children think about the legacy that you're leaving behind the planet that you're going to leave behind for your children do something the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam spoke about one tree planting one tree if you have not done that plant a tree do something towards making this planet greener for our children inshallah ta'ala jazakumullah khair may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of our sins may he accept our good deeds may he help us to contribute towards a greener country may he help us to bring in the teachings of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a very wholesome way into our lives may he cleanse our hearts of all toxic feelings may he fill our hearts with positive and clean emotions and feelings towards one another may he keep us united upon love care and mercy and just as how he united us here in this masjid may he unite us in the gardens of jannah with our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam amin wa akhir da'wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin